uh, this week we're going to do a fun little project for Easter. Now I've done one of these before for a friend of mine and gave it as a little gift. And what I've got here is a chicken's egg, which I've um, blown the egg out of it. And what we're going to do is use a nice old brush and we're going to use this uh, product called Daniel Smith Watercolour Ground and this was um, uh, something that I picked up I thought oh that'd be really fun to do and you paint it onto objects so that you can then once it's dry paint uh, watercolour on top. So we're going to prepare the egg with the with the ground and what I've done here is I'll just give it a little shake I'm just going to pour it out into a little pot so I know what I'm going to use how much I'm going to use give it a good squeeze And then I'm going to add a little bit of water to it, just to get it so it's a consistency where I can paint it quite easily onto the egg. And then hold the egg very, very gently and just paint on the ground. And now usually what I do is go over the one half of the egg, leave it to dry, and then when that's dry, turn it upside down and get a layer on the other end and then probably put on about three layers until you get a nice flat ground. Now be careful, don't get carried away and hold the egg heavily because it will break. You need to be quite gentle with it. And I've got this sweet little jug and you can just sit it on there once you've got it low enough. I'm just going to go just a little bit lower. So once you've got it low enough around the egg, or you could use an egg cup. Just sit in that, wait for it to dry. When it's dry, you can flip it over, do the other end, and about three layers of that, that then that should be ready then, and we can start to paint and um, put our little decoration onto it. Once you've got um, your three layers on, you can use a very small piece of um, oh, <laughs> sandpaper just to very lightly smooth out any little ridges because it's very difficult it, it dries very quickly so it's hard not to get brush marks on it but don't press too hard or the egg will crack and then you'll have to start all over again so just very gently any little brush marks it's quite nice just to smooth them away I'm being very gentle so gentle it's hard to hang on to the egg Anyway, we do that all over and get it nice and smooth and then we can start working on the design. Once you've finished sanding off those little um, ridges, you don't have to get it perfect, but you know it's nice just to get the big lumps off the surface of the egg. You're then ready to paint. Now, you could say, well, why aren't you painting this on a white egg? And I was thinking, well, yes, um, I, have paint, I have painted onto a white egg, but the um, watercolour doesn't stay on there very well. Whereas with this ground, you can just use an ordinary egg um, and get it all prepared nicely like that. And it sort of makes a better surface for actually painting onto. So you could draw on with a pencil a very light design, but actually I quite like to go freestyle with this and I've got um, a little snowdrop here in the vase. So I thought probably what I'll do is I'll just paint um, little snowdrops onto the egg because they're quite nice to think about. I mean, I know they're usually over by Easter, but they would look really lovely on, on an egg design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it freestyle. So that, that requires a little bit of confidence, but actually I think, I think we can give this a go. I'm going to remove that um, white background because it's quite nice for you to see the egg on the black. And I'm going to mix up some colours. Just get rid of that old brush there and use my mixing brush. I'm going to mix up some nice green for the little snowdrop. So I'm starting with some lemon yellow some thallocyanine blue and a lovely fresh minty green for the stem. I've got my um, snowdrop just in a little vase here and when we do the leaves we'll pull the leaves out and have a little look at the colour. At the moment I just want to get the, the head of the flower on. I'm going to make some dark green with French ultramarine, lemon and a little sennelier yellow. And that's going to be for the tiny little dark calyx or you know uh, sepals at the top. We only need a tiny amount of that paint because we've only got a tiny little flower to do. The other colour that I need 
is my mid-tone grey to make the flower stand out. So I'm going to use some French ultramarine, a little bit of Sennelier yellow, a little bit of Sennelier red, and more French ultramarine. <laughs> Just going to add a little bit of cobalt blue to it just to cool that mid tone down and make it slightly more, um, I suppose, a little bit prettier in colour. Right, so I'm going to use my number two. This is my number two synthetic brush. And what I want to do is just use that little bit of grey and establish my flower. I'm going to put my flower coming down here. I'm just going to use that to just draw on the shape of the petal. Just need a fine line. Just like that. <laughs> so just a little snowdrop shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some shadow in here. Just float that shadow in through the middle of the flower. You'll find it's a little bit more absorbent uh, working on this surface. It's a bit like painting onto um, chalk or something like that. You can see it goes matte very quickly, but actually it lifts off really, really well. I'm just going to put a little bit more of a nicer shape down the bottom. Quite tricky. A little bit of shadow down the bottom. And then I'm just going to wipe away to get a finer line. So you can just use that damp brush just to get your little edge much finer. Like so. It dries very, very quickly. So what I'm going to do now is use my fine liner. Ooh, put a bit of dirt on there, stir that in. Um, my, I'm going to use my fine liner to make some little veins. So I'm going to get my brush right on its tiptoe and run. Oh, it's a bit thick. Just run it very, very gently through. to give them a little bit of a veining there and then up at the top it's going to use that teeny little line just to create the edge of the petal at the top of the flower I don't think this is anything that you would hand in at a botanical <laughs> um, exhibition but it's a nice little idea and it's quite fun to do freehand because then you can see whether your whether your drawings improved at all. You know, I'm I'm always interested to see if I can actually paint from life without doing the drawing. One should be able to after a while, but it's a bit like when my um, French teacher said to me at school, "By now, ladies, you should be ladies. By now, children, you should be uh, thinking in French." And I must admit. That's what put me off, because I suddenly thought, oh, well, I'm not thinking in French. I never did think in French. So uh, I'm obviously never going to speak French. And that was it. That year I gave up French and never, never went back to it, which is a shame, because I think if she hadn't have said that, I might have carried on. Not that it was her fault. But it's a bit like, you know, you think if somebody says, oh, by now you should be able to draw freehand. And if you can't, that's no reason to stop. So now I've gone over to my dark green and I'm just drawing a little outline of the top of the snowdrop there. And I'm going to do one half in dark green. And then water down a little bit of that stem green and put some of that towards the bottom there. And then just soften like we do when we're painting on paper, just use a little bit of that colour just to soften that in. So you see we're getting a little bit of a, an idea now. And a bit like on the paper, you can use your eradicator if you've made a mistake and you don't want a line. I just made a little line there that I didn't want. 
you can just wiggle away with the eradicator and it will dry very quickly. A bit like painting on vellum, you can just wipe it away. Hurrah! So this is where the, the tricky bit gets. We've got to do this tiny weeny, if I just bring this into shot here, we've got to do this tiny weeny little stem coming through here. And then we have this lovely curly um, sepal over the top. So I'm going to use that brighter green. Just get that on my fine liner now. And I'm going to try and get a nice curve without breaking the egg and without wobbling. And I'm going to do a little bit of an, a line next to it to get the depth. Then I'm going to jump over a little bit to get the highlight. Oh, that's a bit tricky, that angle. Turn the egg so it's comfortable. Might need a little bit of an eradicator on that. And then I'm going to add another little puddle over here of some quinacridone gold and take some of that pea green and mix it with the gold and take the stem down in a different colour because this is going to be the colour that gets hidden behind that lovely soft transparent sepal. Now for the sepal just water down the stem green so it's really really pale and I'm going to run it over here very thin. A couple of streaks should do it. Brush on its tiptoe, oh I'm just going to get rid of that blob of water, brush on its tiptoe. You can push the brush down to get a little bit of thickness and then lift it up. Can you see we're just getting that pale green there? And then turn it and bring it down over the stem. And a little full stop. I'm just going to give myself a little stopping point there so I put my stem onto there. So while I'm waiting for that to um, dry I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to trim that little neck because I had a little wobble here so I'm going to use the eradicator just to smooth it away. The ground is quite rough but actually I quite like that it's going to make it look quite well it's going to look homemade but it's going to look quite rustic as though the um, egg was made out of plaster. Right, back to my fine liner now. Now, doing long stems on here is quite tricky, but also we want to think about the shape of the egg. It would be really nice if there was a bit of a curve. I know they're quite straight, these little snowdrops, but we're painting a snowdrop on an egg, so, um, you know, we can make up the rules. <laughs> and so I'm going to use that stem colour and I'm doing, going to turn it a bit like when we turn the page and I'm going to give myself a line. Do it in little stages like that, a little line. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a curve. So you've got a nice shape as the snowdrop curves around the egg. So now I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to try and get the width of the stem absolutely right. So I'm just going to draw a nice little line alongside that and maybe just rest it and see if I can get a good, a good straight edge. stem on and be very gentle because it's very difficult holding the um, egg and painting at the same time but you sort of need to hold it because you've got to sort of move it around to get the curve. So I just irritated a little bit of a, a whoops-a-daisy away there and what I'm going to do is just run a little fine line now along the back of the sepal. There's a little vein that goes all the way through.
and then what you can do is add a little bit of lemon to your green just a tiny bit and add the little slightly yellowy papery skin that goes alongside it goes a little bit greener towards the end as well just turn it around so you can see what I'm doing it's nicer to do it in that little pale green because then you can you don't, not everything's grey because if you have it all grey then it can look a bit dirty so what I'm going to do here is just lift out a little bit of light in the middle with my eradicator hurrah for the eradicator so that we can just take out a little bit of light where the green has just got rid of what was my lovely stem coming behind. Leave that to dry, don't go straight back onto it. And what I'm going to do is a little bit of artistic license. I'm going to use some of the dark green that I use for the top of the flower. I'm going to use that just as a little shadow underneath this teeny weeny little neck just to make it stand out a bit more Oop. got a bit of a wobble there you see that just gives it a bit more definition you can move it around so that you can get the right angle and then I'm using my grey, wake up the grey just everything goes to sleep really quickly because you're concentrating so hard things are evaporating elsewhere in the room I'm just going to put a little bit of grey towards this end just to extend the sepal there and I'm also going to put a little vein of grey through that middle there just to show it's got some texture to it so I can come back to my flower now and I'm going to put on some even finer lines now that the others have dried to get those fine veins through the flower I'll leave those to dry and then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the grey towards the top it goes a little bit warmer the shadow so I'm going to put that little shadow in there just a slightly warmer shadow there and then just tease that down with a bit of water Actually, my um, snowdrops have been eaten by something this year. Something's going along and nibbling little holes out of them. Now, I've planted all of the snowdrops, and we've been um, at this house for 12 years, and I still don't have a clump of them. I'm a bit sad. They haven't really taken off very well. Now, my stem's dried, so I'm going to use some of the darker colour here. Again, a little bit of artistic licence. I'm going to put a little bit of a darker line along this side just to give it a bit more tone and then a little bit more on this side sandwiching in a little highlight and just here where the sepal widens there's a little bit more darkness And if you put too much on, which I've just done, just use the eradicator and just wipe out through the middle. And that should give you your return of highlight through the stem. So what we can do with our um, ground is if we've made any lines too heavy, you can use the ground as some paint. So I'm going to put some of that out onto my palette don't forget to remove it once you've finished and I'm going to use that just to shave away a little bit of the outline that I used for the flower can you see I've just slimmed that line down and that just gets rid of any little mistakes which is very rewarding <laughs> And if you do sort of, you know, put your thumb or finger into the into some paint and put some paint onto it, it's very easy just to wipe it off with a little damp rag and paint over it. So don't be afraid of making mistakes on this. 
Um, and the other thing is as well, if you lose your highlight, you can return it with some of the white ground. So on this side, to just add a little bit more finesse to my outline, a little bit more highlight to this side of the flower, and a little bit more light at the base. Okay, so now I'm going to bring, bring my um, flower out of the tissue paper and just lay it on there, just so I can see the colour of the leaf. And actually when it's in the garden it tends to look very blue-like, uh, it's got this little sort of bloom to it, but when you bring it indoors it's actually quite a green leaf. So um, because people know it as slightly bluer, we'll mix up a bluish colour for it, uh, towards the blue. So using my stem green as the base, that was lemon and ceru uh, sorry thallocyanine, you can add some more thallocyanine and a little bit of Sennelier Yellow Deep. So we're going towards this sort of slightly aqua blue. And then take a little bit of Sennelier Yellow, because you can see down here the stem gets very yellowy towards the base. Take a little bit of your dark green and mix that in, so you've got a, a slightly dirty yellowy green. I'm going to use my number two brush and I'm going to put a nice little leaf onto my study. So pick up the colour and give it a little dab so you haven't got too much on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down so that it goes down and round the bottom. So put the brush on and then push to get a bit of width on the brush and then lift away when you get to the stem. So you get a nice little sweep like that. You see that minty green looks really pretty doesn't it? And then to get another layer you can do, the, do it in reverse. Sweep and lift. And do one more sweep. So it's had three layers. And then I can use my fine liner it's going to dry very, very quickly, so I can use my fine liner just to continue my stem down. And then I'm going to use that dark green that we used at the top of the flower up here to do the other side of the leaf where it's curling around. So I'm going to just draw a very fine dark line and then taper it away. As that dries, you can make more of the edge. Just gives it that nice little look as though it's wrapping around. And then what we do down the bottom is we pick up some of the minty green on our other brush, continue it down. And just, it's an artistic license here, I'm just going to swirl it round now. I'm going to swirl round with the yellow. And I'm going to turn my little base into a swirl around the bottom of the egg. Just for fun. So there's my first little snowdrop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap them around and make a nice little pattern around the egg with lots of little buds. And we could even do one that's opening, so you could have one with several petals. As I say, this one's been rather brutally nibbled away, so uh, it's rather, um, rather a sad specimen. But actually for the purposes of this, we just need something to remind us of the shape and size. So I'm going to get my little fine liner out. I'm going to mix up some of my grey and then place my flowers where I want them. Now it's a little bit of a, a sort of you know experiment so you can you can put the flowers where you want but if you imagine you'd like maybe three or five flowers around the egg so that you've got a good view all the way around. So we'll just paint these on and we'll, sit, we'll, we'll put that to music and then you can decide maybe while you're watching this how you would design yours.
doing my little painting and I haven't given you any um, pictures because um, you can get better examples of a snowdrop somewhere else my snowdrops a bit manky and actually the freestyle you just need to look on on um, the internet or in a book about snowdrops and you'll see some nice shapes because you're not actually copying anything precisely like you would be for a botanical study and what I'm doing here now is just going around and if there's any little lumps of the white ground that just uh, is, too wor is too worrying to sand it now and where I've used the white, the white background just to sort of smooth away any mistakes and I've got a little lump I'm just scratching them away with a, um, with a scalpel here just to smooth it out. And you can varnish it 
Um, I would use an oil-based varnish so that you don't dislodge any of the watercolour because it, it's quite volatile on this ground and you leave it to dry overnight and then the following day just very lightly with a soft brush and some maybe some oil-based picture varnish or uh, something like that that's not too yellow and you can varnish it and that will give it a little bit more um, solidity. And so if I just spin it around you can see how I've got the stems curving round to sort of mimic the shape of the egg which is quite nice and you can see I've exaggerated the grey so that the little flowers stand out. I've got an open one, a bud and a semi-open one there and then at the bottom what I've done is I've twisted the stems and the leaves round to create a nice little pattern at the bottom. So I thought that would be quite a fun little project for you to do. It's not exactly botanical illustration, but it is a sweet little gift that you can give somebody at Easter maybe, or just decorate your table with a few of them in a basket. That would be fun to do. Now, blowing the eggs, if you need to know how to blow the eggs, there's loads of stuff like that on the internet, so you can look at that. But if you don't know how to do it, I'll just explain briefly. You can use a scalpel or something like this, and you just make a little hole in the end of the egg both ends to a tiny little hole and then you hover over a little bowl and you blow as hard as you can through the top hole and the egg will just magically come out of the little hole at the bottom and then just give it a little rinse and then you're away to paint it with your ground and they are quite fragile um, but that's what's quite nice about eggs isn't it they're a delicate little thing and it's a fun little project to do and I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it's a nice restful break in between all of that botanical illustration that really commands our concentration. This one will prove to you that you can paint freestyle and you can actually produce something um, without having to draw it all up first. Give it a go, have some fun and uh, enjoy your Easter.